this episode of Car Warriors. Go, you're good, go. You're team leader, you do it. That's it, it's done. It's family versus friends. <laughs> when a father and daughter team take on some boys from Baltimore. Wow, that was brute force and ignorance. As they battle to turn a classic workhorse into a custom street ride. Put the bird out on this. You're wrong. I'm wrong? You're wrong. I'm Jimmy Shine, and I hold several land speed world records. I also run the best speed shop in Southern California. For me, it's all about style and power. I have searched for the best custom car builders in the country to take on my challenge. Create the ultimate automotive transformation in just 48 hours. Starting with two mystery cars. Woo! All right! A dream collection of parts, and with the help of my two lead mechanics, Brad Fanshaw, he's been customizing cars for 25 years, winner of both Ford and GM Design Awards, and is the owner of Bond Speed Wheels. And Ray McClellan, he's the owner of Full Throttle Customs, specializing in tuning street machines that have in excess of 1,000 horsepower. They'll have just 48 hours to transform their cars from scrap... It's a part right there. ...to show. The winner gets to keep their car. But first, they need to impress me. My shop, my rules. Nobody quits in this shop. It's time to gear up for battle. This is Car Warriors. For this week's competition, on the red side of the garage from San Dimas, California, LNG Enterprises. LNG Enterprises is a family-owned and operated business. I've been working there just about 13 years. Ever since I was 16, I've been building vehicles with my dad. One of the proudest moments of my life is being here with my daughter, building this car today in this uh, competition. She's just got great talent. I definitely think the blue team is going to underestimate our team because they're going to see a woman. It's like, oh, a chick's leading this team? Don't let the makeup fool you, because when it needs to be done, I will crack the whip. And their opponent on the blue side from Baltimore, Maryland, Northeast Elite. 26 years old. I own my own shop. We've been in business almost a year now. Baltimore was popular. There's broad spectrum of everything. I do a ton of mini truck style stuff, but we get all kinds of stuff coming through the door. Mount the intercooler in the front. We're going to win this competition because we're the best. We build high-end, six-figure vehicles every day, all day, and we're going to win because that's what we do. James, welcome to the Car Warrior shop. You guys are going to have 48 hours to build these cars that I've selected for you. 48 hours isn't a whole lot of time to build a car. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of help. That help's going to come in the form of my lead techs. This is Brad Fanshaw and Ray McClelland. Brad has been randomly assigned to the red team, while Ray has been randomly assigned to the blue team. You guys ready to see the cars that you're going to be working on for the next 48 hours? Yeah! Yeah, yeah me too. Brad, Ray, please, let's have a look. Yeah. Two 1969 Chevrolet C10 pickup trucks. The C10 pickup truck was part of the second generation of Chevy pickups, designed to be more than just work trucks and appealed more to families. Coil spring trailing arm suspension helps increase the smoothness of the ride. A new two-spoke steering wheel was created as well as a foot pedal parking brake. As always on Car Warriors, we're going to start this competition with a challenge. First team to get their vehicle up on the lift, motor and transmission removed, placed in these taped boxes in front of the lift, is going to win their choice from one of these two motors behind me here. First motor to my left, small block 350, 375 horse. However, to my right, big block, 454 cubic inch, it makes 450 horse. 
the winning team gets to have their choice. Now, does everybody understand the rules? Yeah. Oh, that's good, because the clock starts now. Let's go, guys. Come on. Yeah, get that block. Get that block. Put in drive. Take the break off. There you go. There you go. There you go. 916. 916. Snap inch. We don't even know where anything is, and people are yelling out things, and, and we're trying to find things, and I'm trying to get stuff for them, but this is going crazy right now. Hey, let's get it off. Hey. You know, I really want this big block. I think it's going to be badass. This first challenge, everybody goes nuts, and everybody just moves so fast. It seems like these guys are doing pretty good right now. I mean, it looks like they're well ahead of the other team right now. The blue team from Northeast Elite may have fallen behind early, but they quickly make up ground to catch up to the red team from LNG Enterprises. Hold the hook, Brett. Or Jeff, got it. Going over. I see the motor challenge, and I'm a little wary of that because I know it's not a strong point of our guys. It's got a speed screw in it over here. Got to get rid of them. The blue team came out of the gate with a ton of energy. They were a little unfocused, slightly reckless. No. You got a battery? Wow, that was brute force and ignorance. Hope you don't need it. Half inch lock it. Come on. Meanwhile, the red team from LNG Enterprises continues their fast pace. Oh, here, here, here. I need the bolt cutters back. Here you go. Man, this team is racing through this engine challenge. I mean, it hasn't even been 10 minutes yet. Come on, come on. And they're all ready to pull their motor. All the way, come yeah, on. Yeah, you guys are doing good. Come on. Oh, you got one more tied in. That's impressive. Pull, guys. Go, you guys. Go, go. Good job. We're into it. It like, seemed like as soon as we started, it was over. Go, you're good. Go. Go. Careful. All right, here it comes. These guys are working real fast. Drop it. Drop it. Drop it. it was a little over 11 minutes to get that whole motor and transmission out. That's pretty impressive. All right, looks like the uh, team from the West Coast here actually won the engine challenge. Yeah! Yeah! Means you guys get your choice of engines. Oh, yeah. Teresa, team leader. Which one do you want? Going with the big block. You want the big block. East Coast. That means you guys get the 350 small block. Still has 375 horse. Great motor. Don't be disappointed. We got a long race ahead of us. The engine challenge has been won. But you know what that means? The parts cage is now open. Yeah! Go, guys! Come on, grab that grill! Jimmy opened the parts cage and went through there. We grabbed a set of wheels. We thought we were going to work with the truck. We grabbed some air suspension stuff. We didn't know we were going to use it or not. We grabbed as much new sheet metal as we could find, save time on that. What else do we need, Louie? And you can start on the, on the hood. Start standing. We got a brand new hood, yep. So this parts cage right now, it's crazy. Put this stuff out, you guys. I'm yelling out to my team. What did you get for the gauge cluster? It looks just like that. Okay. There are certain things that I want on this ride, and I'm going to make sure that we get them. Hand cook. Okay. We're going to go with the 285s in the rear. A nice, bigger, uh, wider tire, right? Yes. Okay. And what do you got in the front? We got 255s. Sweet. Perfect. Let's go, you guys. Let's get started. So with the C10, we got a long bed over there. It's two-wheel drive. We all agreed we want first thing, we want to lower it. Joe, what were you thinking on the audio? Well, we're definitely going to have to remove the gas tank, put a fuel cell in the back, okay. and uh, start working through the bed. And maybe our speaker enclosure will port through the cab. We okay. should have a so big audio we'll have in the bed and yeah. stuff. Red Team has a concept for this truck. It's a street custom, and we're going to make it low to the ground, big horsepower, some bright colored paint, and a lot of extras. Let's stay on task, you guys, and I know we can do this. Woo! Let's go, you guys! All right! We got a organized, a group organized, where Smitty is out for dog. He's gonna be yelling orders the whole time. Even especially when I'm overdoing the interior, we listen to him, we kind of game plan. Once we get the cab off, we can almost kind of break back down. So tell me a little bit about, first of all, the paint. What colors, what kind of a scheme? We're gonna go silver or Ryan silver on the top and do like a brandy wine on the bottom. We're gonna throw some realistic flames on it. I heard you guys talking about some major mods, so um, I want to put a section in here we'll call mods. We're gonna shave it all up and uh, sh make a short bed out of it. So a short bed, how short are you we're going? Cut, we're gonna cut 10 inches out of the long bed. The plan to cut 10 inches out of the bed of this truck in just 48 hours, that's really ambitious. If the team's successful, I think Jimmy will be really impressed. If 
not, I think it's going to be a disaster. Coming up. We got some extra metal here if you guys want to add a little length to that farm truck. Why is there a giant hole going from the bed into the cab? If you don't get it exactly 100% squared, we lose. The red team from LNG Enterprises has won the engine challenge in a blistering fast 11 minutes. Yeah! 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 Good job. With the red team's traditional long bed and the blue team's sportier short bed designs in place, they can start focusing on the four essential elements of building a car. Engine and transmission, suspension, body and paint, and interior. With the red team's old engine out, they've taken the lead. Each team starts tackling all their tasks, and for the next few hours, everyone is building furiously. Yeah, we've got that 3 8 impact. With an ambitious multi-step plan to cut 10 inches out of their bed, the blue team from Northeast Elite gets to work stripping down their truck. And we stripped all the body off, got everything broken down into its absolute minimum sense. We weren't coming back later trying to take things apart. This is the first time in this competition I've ever seen anybody take one of these 40-year-old factory vehicles and take it down to the chassis. All right, slowly down, slowly down. Ready? The last thing to remove is their old engine and transmission. And by doing that, they've stripped their truck clean. We're going to cut this and make it a short bed. So what I'm doing is I'm building a bracing system so when we cut it apart, everything stays square. What this team is doing is really quite ambitious for a 48-hour build. You want a three-quarter. What they're doing is taking 10 inches out of the main frame of the chassis, sliding the whole suspension, the whole kit and caboodle, moving everything forward. Doing a mod like this is what's going to win this competition. It's a pretty aggressive mod. It's extreme. Cutting the frame plan is pretty ambitious, but the frame itself should roll pretty quick. Uh, the bodywork may take a little bit here or there, but it's not that bad of a plan. Moment of truth actually comes when we put the body back on the frame to make sure that everything aligns correctly. That's when we'll know if it was a good job or not. What you see. Yeah. I think this is going to work, man. Once we plug weld all this, that's done. <laughs> Don't try this at home. Meanwhile, on the red side of the garage, Louise gets to work on installing the new suspension. Our strategy with the front end is to uh, get about a three inch drop, good brakes, good handling, oversized rotors, should be good. Yeah, it went, it went. Where's the spindle? Okay, we're good. One of the major concerns right now, it's really in the ride height. These trucks, we have a, uh, a short performance tire on them and we really need to get these trucks slammed down on the ground. The front, we've already cut the coils, but the rear, we're probably gonna go airbag. All right, good luck with that. Cool. Thanks. Back on the blue side of the garage, the team from Northeast Elite is still working on shortening their bed. See these ears right here? This is the leading edge of the bed. However, the sides of it actually come out and go around the cab, giving it the illusion that the cab and the bed are one piece. So as long as these guys maintain that 10 inches they took out of the main chassis, move those rear cab mounts, simply by taking a 10 inch section out of the bed, they're still gonna have it look just spot on. We got some extra metal here if you guys wanna add a little length to that farm truck. Here you go, just in case you need it. You're, you're basically working with three different panels here. So it's, it's very precise because you don't want a big gap when you weld it. So we got to take it off, take it on. Little ground here, little ground here, little ground here. Till we get a real, real nice fit on it all the way around. And we'll go ahead and weld it all together. The bed shortening project is coming along nicely. But concern is mounting about the length of time it's taking. I keep looking over at Smitty. He's still doing some body work on it. My biggest concern right now is just how much time Smitty's actually spinning on this bed. Smitty's still over there block sanding this thing out and trying to get his belt lines right. But do they want to win or do they want to just work? So if they just want to work, then they're the wrong guys for the job. Okay. Well, he's putting on silicone, he's putting on muds, maybe 15 minutes. Soon, I want to get it together. Okay. While the blue team continues to spend valuable time on their bed, Joe from the red team prepares their truck for an audio overhaul. Punch through. Why is there a giant hole going from the bed into the cab? Because there's no room and we can't really put a box behind the seat and the, the fire 
enough real estate for the box to house the woofers properly. So we're going to put the speaker enclosure here in the bed. We're going to port it through the cab. Now, is that going to cut down the space in the bed for, like, you know, hauling hay or something like that if you're on the farm? We would hope so. After this truck's built, it shouldn't be hauling hay anymore. What should it haul? Beautiful women. Oh, God, I set him up so perfectly See? for hauling ass, <laughs> and he gives me beautiful women. You know, at that point's off. <laughs> So we're about seven hours into the build, and as you can see, we've got a lot of work done. The frame's already shortened 10 inches, the bed's already cut. The next tricky spot's going to be actually shortening the drive shaft. One of the big deals with dry shaft is if you don't get it exactly 100% square, you're going to have a, a real bad vibration. No matter how beautiful the car is, how low it is, how nice the paint is and stuff, if you drive down a road and it's like, woo -doo 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 -doo, we lose. But a bumpy ride isn't the worst thing that can happen if the blue team doesn't shorten their drive shaft perfectly. They weld this thing back together. There's structural failure, the weld shears. I'm at high RPM going down the drag strip. This thing separates, comes apart. Drive shaft comes through the floor, stabs me in the heart, and I die. Yeah, I don't want that to happen. Coming up. I just don't like the way I had to do it in sections. If that comes apart, I'm going to have some words. It's going to take too long. Can't do it right now. This says team leader, and I get to decide, and that's it. Ten hours into the competition, and San Dimas, California's LNG Enterprises has made substantial progress on their suspension and audio systems. Cable's all hooked up, wiring's done, everything inside the engine compartment's done. You got power to the back, all you have to do is hook the circuit breaker. Hook the circuit breaker. But Baltimore, Maryland's Northeast Elite is spending a lot of time on an ambitious plan to shorten their truck bed. The most ambitious thing on this build is definitely shorten the bed, well, shorten the frame, shorten the drive shaft, which can be a big issue if not done correctly. Keep that thing, keep this up close to that thing. That drive shaft is only two inches in diameter. It takes a lot of torsional twist. If that thing's not right, that's coming through the floor and maybe going into my neck. Cutting the drive shaft is only the first step in this process. Now comes the hard part. Putting this drive shaft back together can be real tricky because if the welds aren't strong and the drive shaft's not perfectly straight, when Jimmy goes to drive this thing, it can be real ugly. I don't think it's gonna come apart. I think it penetrated just fine. I just don't like the way I had to do it in sections. It's fine, dude. I think that's just fine. If that comes apart, though, I'm gonna have some words. On the red side of the garage, Teresa and I were walking by and she saw the bedwood and uh, we were looking at it and it's basically it's a rail kit. Gives us that wood bed look so that way you can build everything on top. It adds a little contrast and, and, and one more custom touch to the truck I think. Good way to go. I didn't like the idea. I didn't like the extra work. I didn't like the extra amount of time that it was going to take up. What's going on? And they want to change the damn bed again. Why? How, much, how many times are we going to do this thing over? we got a ton of to do on this truck. You know, I like the wood. Hey, what's going on? They want to change it back to wood now. We're not changing it back to wood. That's what we decided no. to do. We need to get it done. We need to get it done now. Yeah, the way we all talked about. No. Which was with the bedwood. That's it. It's done. This is what my daughter doesn't understand. Is this bedwood kit... The amount of work that it's going to cause us to have to cut and trim and fit all these panels, it's just going to be really, really hard. If we win this thing, isn't it all of our vehicle? Yeah. Well, then why don't we get to say something about it? Because this says team leader, and I get to decide, and that's it. My call. Done. Put a wood bed in it. I love my dad, but, you know, this is the part I don't like. You know, I mean, feeling like this and, you know, him feeling like that, I mean... This is the part I don't like. As tensions mount on the red side, over on the blue side of the garage, Jimmy admires the team from Northeast Elite's shortened truck bed. They just went from eight feet down to a little over seven feet. So it's not really a short bed, but it's not a long bed. It's very unique. You're wrong! You're wrong. I'm wrong? You're wrong. How's that? A long bed Chevy bed is a seven foot bed. I thought it was an eight foot. Nope. You guys, gonna, you're going to measure it, ain't you? Because you hate for me to tell you I'm wrong, don't you? No, it's just the way you go about it. It's not what you say. It's how you go you about it. it. You hate it. You 
Hey, Smitty, I got a question for you. What's that, buddy? Can you look at this? Because I can't read it. Is that an eight? Damn, I think you're right. I, I told you I didn't know nothing. Don't call me out. I know what I'm talking about. Hey, believe it or not, that's the first time I've ever been wrong. Is that right? Yeah. Well, the day is young. I'm sure there's more to come. Thank you. Thank you. Smart. I'm a big fan of yours, by the way. Trust me. Meanwhile, the red team is focusing on putting their differences behind them and getting their engine into their truck. Slow, guys. Okay. Go ahead. Hold on, hold on. Keep going. Okay. Okay, we're good. We won the challenge, so we won the big motor. Only fortunately, the car is set up for a small block. So now having the big block is going to take us an extra hour, you know, to make everything fit right. But, you know, it's worth it. We got all that extra horsepower right there, so. Okay, so transmission's good, motor mount's good. We should fit the dry shaft. With their engine in, the red team has pulled into the lead. Already behind schedule due to their ambitious bed shortening project, the blue team hustles to get their motor installed. I'm mating the engine transmission together now, getting ready to drop it back in. But as they wheel their engine toward their truck, disaster strikes. Coming up. How does that happen? I just don't know. I must crush Bobby's foot. And later... Starting the interior halfway through the build is a bad idea. This is coming slowly, but it's coming. If I don't have interior in there, you lose. Northeast Elite has finished their ambitious modification of cutting their truck bed. If that comes apart, I'm going to have some words. As a result, LNG Enterprises steps up their game. We're doing the bedwood. And install a sophisticated bedwood kit into their truck. Just when Northeast Elite thinks things are on track. My engine pulled the stand. I'm standing right there. Dry. I must crush Bobby's foot. How did that happen, dude? I don't know. Did this spin? Chris, bring it up. Jack it up. Oh, I'm worried about the oil pan. Oh, my. After checking out the damage, the team discovers the engine survived the drop. Seen better days. But the oil pan did not. What's wrong? The pan bended in. If we pull this off, we can straighten it out enough. Okay. Hey, Ray, you got a minute? Sure. I just heard that one of my motors got dropped on the ground. How did that happen? I just don't know. What happened? We were moving the lift hit a pothole over there and it started bouncing because the arm's so long and without this safety catch on it this thing come right off really yeah well you guys got real lucky all right thanks ray so the same little bump in the road right here we're actually going to use it uh, to our advantage right now because we actually need to bow this out a little bit so we need to support the alva ring while we hammer the center section out. Ray uses the same bump that damaged the oil pan to hammer the oil pan back into shape. And in a matter of minutes, the team is able to drop their small block engine into the truck's chassis. You want a motor mouth? Meanwhile, the West Coast's LNG Enterprises makes headway on a plush bench seat, which they hope will win over Jimmy in the judging. I think the size Good. is okay, yeah. yeah. I think I think it was a little bit rounder, so it came more to a point and not as square. Yeah, I like it. Taking Teresa's advice, Carlos sizes and glues leather panels, which will give the cabin centerpiece a multi-dimensional look. Three hours later, Teresa checks on Carlos's progress. Looks good, good job. Thank you. The father-daughter team from the West Coast LNG Enterprises pushes past the team from Baltimore when they complete their truck's bench seat. Meanwhile, on the other side of the garage, Brad from Northeast Elite is just getting started. Starting the interior halfway through the build is a bad idea. It seems like Brad, you know, even though he's the team leader, he's on the chassis, he's on the body, he's doing all these different things. There we go. He's the interior guy. If I don't have interior in there, you lose. Go to bed seat's fairly easy, or you can get pretty elaborate with it. I'm gonna do a lot of that cheating with the foam, cheating with the cover, cheating with the design, that kind of stuff. Plan for the interior, whole thing's gonna be flame red, top to bottom. Gonna keep it as minimal as possible, but try and red out as much as I can. Racing against the clock, Brad struggles to complete a fully upholstered interior. A whole lot of red. How's this coming? This is coming slowly, but it's coming. 
clock's running down, the seat's done, my door panel's about 75% done, but nothing to put in the truck. I still got a bear cab. While Brad works to finish the interior, and with only 18 hours remaining, Northeast Elite decides to replace the stock coil springs with airbags, which will save them valuable time, as well as lowering the truck and giving it a better stance. You're mounting this one right here. We gotta offset it just a pinch so we can get the trader valve in there. I like airbags, you know, if you can do it properly. But there's certain things you need to take into consideration. Number one, are you gonna have time to do the job right? Give yourself plenty of clearance under there. Well, this solid. The airbags are gonna be set right height since we don't know if we're gonna have the time to put a full management system on it. So we're just gonna set them and make sure nothing leaks. The air ride's got it down about six inches, which gave it a better stance. Over on the red team side of the garage, Teresa and her father face a serious setback with their elaborate paint design. Dude, that's like 10 coats. That's ridiculous. I know. That's why I wanted to use this color. But that sucks because the truck is going to take way longer with that much time. You want me to make one more whole thing or yeah, what? Yeah, one more whole thing. They're having to apply multiple coats to reach the deep, rich color of brown they want, which is wasting time and, most importantly, eating up all their paint. Uh, you got more? Coming up. Don't you have a stock column in it with the column shift? Got the holster. 27 inches in. Now really isn't the time to be figuring out where the gas hole goes. Here, here, here. I just don't know how we're gonna pull it off. Four hours into the competition. That's like 10 coats. That's ridiculous. LNG Enterprises' rich paint design has unexpectedly left them short on paint. And they must now figure out a way to finish their truck. You got more? Well, I do not have enough brown paint. So this is what I do. I think I barely have enough to do the hood and the tonic cover. So I paint those two things, and if I have to do a different color under the hood, I do a different color. I don't know what my daughter's thinking right now about doing this hood. I just don't know how we're going to pull it off. I'm doing the perimeter of this and brown. The whole center is going gray. I don't have enough brown to do under the hood. I have to do orange. As any car builder knows, there's always the uh, oh issues that come up when you're building something, especially in paint. That's it. Then I have no more of the brown paint. And then it just takes time, you know, to fix it. To solve their paint shortage problem, Teresa decides to do the hood with a two-tone color. With their new paint strategy, LNG Enterprises rolls the rest of their truck into the booth to finish the job. All right, good. An hour and a half behind the red team, Northeast Elite reattaches their flatbed and rolls their own truck into the booth. What's up? And the paint is flying for both teams. After four hours spent finishing up in paint, LNG Enterprises is ready to reveal their truck's new paint job. I'm looking at Teresa's paint job, and it is absolutely awesome. She just really pulled it off, and knowing that she ran in quite a few bumps in the road there, it looks great. She's down. Oh, good. You got the hook. I got awesome. the hood. Meanwhile, the team from the East Coast is behind and is scrambling on their elaborate paint job. Two hours later, Northeast Elite finally pulls their truck out of paint. Car rolls out of paint. I'm really impressed with the color combination and the graphics. I know in a sunlight, like this thing's going to turn on like a light bulb. With a fully painted truck, Northeast Elite catches up with LNG Enterprises. With five hours left in the competition, Jimmy stops the clock. Hey, teams, just gather around, please. We've got yet another challenge. The winning team is going to win an extra hour of build time. Now times seven crew members, that's seven man hours. What I've got for you here are skateboard decks. This is actually going to be an airbrush challenge. In 30 minutes, these boards need to be back here, painted, done, and I'll judge them. Who's the chosen one from the red team? Teresa. And from this team, Dwayne. You ready, Dwayne? <laughs> Bring it. Now remember, the whole crew can be involved. The clock starts now. No, you guys. Hold on. I need you guys to move the bumper. This is going to be my workbench area. I'm going to be doing an old school bomb. I'm going to keep the wood grain background, and then I'm going to have some flames coming out the, uh, right. the bottom of it. All right, ideas, guys. What do we want to do? I really like what you did for that air cleaning cover. So we'll do a skull head, like, screaming that way, car warriors and some flames. Give me some black and a gun, and let's base this out black then. Seriously, a half 
power. Come on. Quite a challenge. With Teresa still working on her base coat, Dwayne gets a head start on his airbrushing. All right, where that clock at? Keep giving me updates on that clock. All right, we've got 15 and a half minutes left. With the blue team surging ahead... Get out of way, guys. Teresa struggles to catch up on her detailing. Because <laughs> me out is not trying. Work with me on this wrench, where we need to be. This part's good. This needs to come down about where your bottom of your white is. Straight up. Good. All right. We're going to see how the other team's doing. All right, Teresa. You're down to about five minutes right now. It's right shut now. Shut up. Did you just tell me to shut up? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm so shaking so bad. I can hold the paper. Uh, no. I nope. don't want you to. All right. I'll see you in a couple minutes, Teresa. Oh, are you kidding me? Didn't think about me, huh? Girl, all I do is think about you. All right, teams, you got about two minutes. Luis, how long is it going to take you to run over there? Ten seconds. I'm just going to hand to the end a second. Stiff arms. Okay, we got one more minute. Hold on, hold on. Our first contestant has arrived. Got about ten seconds to go. Okay, just go. 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 Get it there. Yeah, time's up right now. All right, you guys did it. Very good. Congratulations. All right, Teresa. Beautiful work there. Thank you. Even did the car warrior sign on there. Hey, Dwayne, great job on this skateboard deck. Love the oxyacetylene torch. I got two beautiful skateboards here. Tough choice, tough choice. The winner of this challenge... It's going to be Dwayne. Blue team, Maryland, you guys did a great job. All right, you guys, you know what that means. You guys got an extra hour to work. Use that time wisely. Defeated, LNG Enterprises heads to the break room. Across the garage, Northeast Elite uses their extra hour to fire their engine. Red team's in a break room, hopefully sleeping, because in about 10 or 15 minutes, connectors, we're going to make a little noise. I'm going to squirt some fuel in here and then just do a three, two, one, yep. and you can crank it. Okay. Three, two, one. Hey, that's not good. Hey, you know what's wrong? We still a lot of stuff we got to do. Now we're making decisions. What's going to hit the chopping block? Just bare minimum. We're not going to finish. It's just black it out, man. That's good enough. All right, you guys. Your hour's up. Red team, you guys can go back to work. Go, oh, guys. Back in the competition, LNG Enterprises waste no time in firing up their engine. Louie, let's go ahead and fire it up. Fire in the hole. That is so badass. With their engine fired, LNG Enterprises spends the next several hours focusing on the centerpiece of their build, the Audio City in their truck bed. Joe, it needs to get in there like now. Put it all in. Go get the tailgate, go get the other pieces. Across the garage, Northeast Elite presses furiously to complete their truck, but suffers a huge setback on their floor shifter. Without one, they're dead in the water. Don't you have a stock column in it with the column shift? Well, when we did our engine challenge, we whacked the stock transmission rod cut in half. Can't you weld it back together? You can't find it. You can't Got tossed. It's down to the wire, and now we have to install a floor shifter because these guys cut the linkage during the engine challenge. In danger of having a truck that doesn't drive, Northeast Elite races to install and mount a new shifter with less than 45 minutes left to go. Meanwhile, over by LNG Enterprises, Luis and Brad rush to install the gas door on their wooden bed, putting them in extreme jeopardy of not finishing their truck. So we are 27 inches in. Now really isn't the time to be figuring out where the gas hole goes. But you know what? Better late yeah. than never. You gotta have gas. We decided to give it a try. Do it. We Come need on. A drill. All right, teams. 30 minutes left. There's my shifter hole. I'm cutting that. There we go. Oh, we got three guys on the front end trying to get the shifter in, trying to get the seats in, trying to get the door panels in. At this point, if we can't get the truck done, there's no chance of winning. Put the third out on this. Okay, ready? You get to this point in the competition, you don't have any more minutes. All right, we're through, buddy. They're aluminum and they're wet spin. I know, I know where they're at. 
That's the last gear. That's as far as it goes. Minutes left on the clock. Ray's down underneath the air. He's like, bolt the shift, bolt the shifter up. Now pull it back all the way up in the park. I'm guessing that's park. Houston, we have liftoff. All right, you got one minute left. Go, you guys. <laughs> That's good, that's good. All right, out of the bed. Where we at? Where we at? Trim plate. That's all the way around corner, around corner, right here. Ten seconds, guys. Five, four, three, shut the door. Two, shut the door. One. That's it. Tools down and step away from the cars. Coming up, Jimmy tests the trucks in the field and delivers his critiques. The style of this really reminds me of my grandmother's couch. I mean, you guys were this close for a DQ. The teams have worked for 48 straight hours. 10 seconds, guys! It's time to reveal the cars. Shut the door! Looking at this truck when it's all done, it's a complete, cohesive look. It's finished. I think we did it. I'm pretty proud of our truck. Ours might not be as pretty or as fit and finished, but we attempted a hell of a lot more aggressive modification. Uh, I feel like we should take this car back to Baltimore. The teams may have their thoughts, but there's only one opinion that counts. This 48 hours is just killer. You know, I'm looking at the whole package. Paint, body, interior, engine bay, design concept. Then I take it out and I test it. I drive it. I want to see how well it accelerates, brakes, handles, and steers. I'm going to reflect upon the obstacles they overcame to get to that finish line. It's all going to weigh heavy on Judgment Day. First up in the hot seat, from San Dimas, California, LNG Enterprises pickup truck. Nice choice of colors. I mean, they, they actually complement each other. It looks real good. If this thing handles half as good as it looks, I'm going to be real happy. To test the truck's performance, Jimmy will put each pickup through a demanding two-part course. In the slalom, he'll be checking for engine response and handling. <laughs> And at the drag strip, he'll evaluate the truck's overall speed and endurance. I tell you what, a soft compound, hand-cooked tires, the bare brakes work really good in the slalom, even better at the drag strip. He's got a lot of power, and I expect it should, being a 454. I had to get out of the throttle a bit so I didn't blow the tires away. But all in all, I like it. Next to test is the pickup truck designed by Baltimore, Maryland's Northeast Elite. This paint, too, is a really good choice. This just pops. And, you know, this realistic flames did a really good job at it. Motor's beautiful. I tell you what, I'm guessing this thing's going to run pretty hard. actually handled really well. The hand-cooked tires, spot on. I mean, they performed well. The drag strip performed well in the slalom. Got a little smoke show going there. Wasn't terribly fast, but it performs pretty good. With the performance test complete, Jimmy heads back to the garage to further critique the trucks. First up, the team from San Dimas, California. LNG Enterprises, what's the overall theme that you were going for with this build? We went for a classic street custom look. I'll tell you what, I was a little surprised on the color choice. But you know what? It works. Overall, the paint's laid down very well. Thank you. I would have liked to have seen it all copper. But what you did here was a real save. Look at that. It's painted its body color, you two-tone, the firewall, the chassis clean. It's just a real nice, clean job. It's probably one of the finest engine compartments I've ever seen in this competition. Bed of the truck here, it's an awful lot of work, Joe. I know you really didn't want to do that, did you? We want to change the damn bed again. Why don't we get to say something about it? Because this says team leader, and I get to decide, and that's it. At first, uh, it kind of went against what I was doing, but team agreed that it was the right choice, and I have to agree with the team. You made a good call. Very nice. Got a complete interior. That's what I asked for. I got door panels, 
I even got a custom carpet kit in here. This seat, oh, this is great stitching, great fabric, but maybe not so much the style. The style of this really reminds me of like, I don't know, maybe my grandmother's couch. You know what, overall, you guys were really organized and you made some really good choices. Northeast Elite, you guys are very ambitious. How much do you take out of that chassis? 10 inches. 10 inches. This was a complete raw chassis. That's the gnarliest thing I've ever seen anybody do in 48 hours. Took this thing down the track today, put it through some pretty good corners, got after it, didn't feel any flex. Beautiful. So unfortunately, at time that was spent doing this, other parts of this build had to pay for it. First thing you notice on a car is paint. Man, this thing sparkles like an Easter egg. That house of color shimmering too popped. It looked really good. What was it last 15 minutes maybe? Trying to get a shifter in this thing? Where's my shifter hole? I'm cutting that. I mean, you guys were this close for a DQ. I bet you were thinking you weren't gonna make it. Oh, I had plenty of time left. You had plenty of time left. Absolutely. Uh-uh. <laughs> I think there might be a couple missed items. But overall, you guys built a hell of a truck and accomplished something I wouldn't expect any other team to be able to do. That being said, Ray, Brad, as always, great job. Thanks, guys. All right, Brad. Great job. Thanks, Brad. Thanks. Thank you, sir. All right. The toughest part of this whole competition, I got to sit down and decide who's going to win this competition. I'll be back with you as soon as I can. Thanks again. After 48 hours of relentless building, Jimmy Shine has put each truck through its paces. Now it's time for the ultimate decision. Jimmy has left to decide the winner. The teams anxiously await the verdict. I want to win this competition because it would be the ultimate respect for a woman in a male-dominated industry just to show them what kind of rides I make. I'm looking at the red team's truck, and it looks pretty good. I look at ours, it's missing a couple things off of it, but I'm real happy with the way it looks, and I think it's going to be the bad modification that pushes us over the top. Well now, LNG Enterprises, California, Northeast Elite, Maryland. Both teams gave me many things to consider, but I've made my decision. There's a team that's gonna win tonight. Take home that vehicle that they worked so hard to build. There's also gonna be a team leaving here tonight, going home with nothing. Look at these trucks, both teams radically different. It's really neat to see. Look at this truck over here. It has really came together. It's not a hundred pointer. Given more time, I know you guys could do a better job. What you guys attempted was just nuts. You cut this car in half. The time you spent on that, there's other places that could have used that attention. But that takes balls. But it comes down to this. Who's gonna win this key tonight? Team, Car Warriors, 1969 C10 Pickup Truck Challenge, goes to LNG Enterprise. All I wanted was for Jimmy to say that these were our keys. <laughs> And that's exactly what he said. Built an awesome truck. It was such a great experience, but to have my dad with me, it was the best part of it. <laughs> I'm really proud of Teresa. You watch him grow, you watch him get older, and you see him do amazing things. And to come here and lead all of us to this, it's overwhelming for him. It really is. You guys did a fantastic job. Took a big game on our build, cutting the truck in half and the body mods. I just think the deciding factor for us was missing components. We're not going to take the car home, but we're going to definitely take the experience home. I'm really happy with both teams. I like the shortened chassis and the shortened bed on the blue team, but I also like the way the red team's paint laid down the color choice and the big block engine. Now, if I could just combine both of those, well, then I'd really have something.